This three beards. This three beards media podcast may contain mature themes, and if you're not down, this three beards media podcast may contain mature themes, and if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Like the podcast. Nailed it. Good evening, everyone. I'm Andrew Barber here with my co-host, Drew Shipley. Episode 12, Hawks Eye View, presented by Three Beards Media, sponsored by Robleson Distillery and Kyle Lemon when Trust Mortgage. We're here. Uh, it's bye week for the football team. So this is the perfect time to go ahead and break down everything Iowa men's and women's basketball. Do our full season preview episode here. And uh, before... We get into it. Um, I guess, what are we looking forward to from each team this season? For me personally, I think for the men's team, it's the excitement of the freshman class. There's four freshmen um, coming in. It's supposed to be one of the better classes that Fran McCaffrey has ever had in his time at Iowa. Um, Brock Harding, Price Sanford, Owen Freeman, Laji Dembele. Uh, a lot of hype surrounding all four of those guys. So f- for me, it's the excitement surrounding that. And then on the women's side, I'll take the easy answer. It's getting to watch Caitlin Clark play for another year. I think that's going to be the most exciting and intriguing thing about the women's team this year. So what's your uh, most exciting thing that you're looking forward to from each team this year? Uh, I'm going to start with the women because that's easier to to process, right? Uh you know, national runner up last year. Um, And I think anything short of that again this year is, is the expectation now Um, with, with the best player in the country and and Caitlin Clark, Um, you know, Lisa Bluter made a big deal about losing 40% of their, of their starters from last year. That means that they still have 60% of last year's starters, Andrew. And, you know, the, it was the sixth woman of the year in Hannah Stolke last year, right? Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. So, 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 I mean, is, is she going to be Monica Sinano? No. Does she have to be? No. So I, I, I want to see how she evolves in this basketball team. Um, for the men, um, I, I'm excited to see how, how they manage the bubble because I very much see this team as a bubble team when it comes to March. So I want to see, you know, when it matters most, how, how the team performs in March. Um, you know, people like to say Fran fade a lot, and there is there is some truth in statistics to that, right? So um, I want to see how they can maneuver it this year. And I want to see some fucking effort on defense, Andrew, on a Fran McCaffrey team. That's what I want to see. All right. Well, that's fair enough. Um, let's go through each team. Let's give our team MVP, team most improved, and maybe the most intriguing uh, young player, if you will. So uh, we're going to start with the men. I think the team MVP this year, I think we're losing Chris Murray, Philip Robracha, Connor McCaffrey. I think the guy that's going to step up and kind of fill that scoring role uh, struggle with some shooting early, but I think that's going to be Peyton Sanford. I think he's going to be the leading scorer of this team this year, and I think people are going to really understand how good Peyton Sanford is at basketball um, this season. And my most improved is going to be Josh Dix. He's going to move into the starting lineup, if every indicator that I've heard from the offseason is correct, and he's going to play the one. 
Um, so Iowa had a secret scrimmage with Wichita State, and the lineup was Josh Dix, Tony Perkins, Peyton Sanford, Patrick McCaffrey, Ben Cricky, the transfer from Valpo. Um, so I think it's going to be really intriguing to me to see kind of that one spot, and Josh Dix is going to get the first crack at it. He played that at times. If you remember a few games last year, he kind of closed out ball games at the one last year for Iowa in some spots and did a pretty good job at it. So he's going to go down as my most improved because I think they're going to need him to kind of take a, a leap. I think he's going to be a uh, CJ Frederick like player. If you remember him, that's kind of the role that he's going to have on this team this year. I think is he, he might be that third guy uh, behind Sanford and, Perkins and or Cricky, um, probably say Perkins, but it might be more of a Sanford Perkins, Josh Dix show. Um, the most intriguing guy to me, I think, is uh, Brock Harding. I really like what he can bring uh, as a point guard, and he seems to just kind of have the it factor. If you watch his high school highlights, if you hear his high school coaches talk about him, if you hear the guys on the team talk about him. Um, Iowa men's basketball put out a video starring him and he seems to just kind of have that winner's mentality. He's undersized, but he's not going to let that kind of stop him kind of thing. Um, he's a smooth lefty. I I'm just a sucker for smooth lefty point guards. I think it's, uh, something you don't see all the time. And so that's going to be something that Iowa fans are going to, have to adjust to. So I think his, the physicality of the big 10 is going to be a little bit rough on him in year one, but overall, I think we're going to remember uh, Brock Harding is a pretty good peer point guard. If he's, if he has a good long four year career at Iowa. So that's my uh, most intriguing freshman and or young player. Um, so who are yours for, for the men's side? All right, so I would say, Andrew, I'm going to start with Tony Perkins as being the most valuable player of this basketball team. Uh, I think he will be the leading scorer because uh, we we have seen it at times, and I think we're going to start seeing consistency out of Tony Perkins. Um, and and it would not surprise me if he, he averages 18, 20 a game. Um, I, I find it intriguing that he would be playing the two in the, in the starting role. So I'll be be intrigued to see how that works out for Tony. Um, I would say most improved, or, or you know, that was your second category, I believe. Desante Bowen. I want to see what I want to see what talent he has. You know, like that he was highly touted coming out what two years ago now. Very limited mm-hmm. minutes, but very athletic. He might be the most af- athletic guy on the roster. So I want to see I want to see some athleticism from the Hawkeyes. Uh, especially on the defensive side, and uh, and I, I think we'll see the that improvement piece too. Um, and then you know, most intriguing is just the Samford brothers in general. Uh, is is Peyton going to you know take that you know three or four uh, three three point field goal makes you know a game? Is he going to be like the uh, what would you compare him to, Andrew uh, Jared Utah like? Um, I, I think that's the closest comp I have to him and let's see how good price Sanford is, um, shooting. He's supposedly the better shooter. Um, so let's, let's see what that looks like, you know, in a six, seventh man, seventh man role off the bench, I'm assuming, uh, for this season yeah. as, a fresh, as a freshman. So, um, those would be my three keys there. Uh, Tony Perkins. DeSante Bowen and then the Sanford brothers uh, as the intriguing piece to that this season. I think you're frozen, Andrew. Sorry about the technical difficulties, folks. We'll see if Andrew rejoins us here.
I, I sincerely apologize, that- everyone. I don't know what's going on. I'm having internet issues tonight. It's it's the worst thing I've ever had here. My internet went out yesterday and for like three hours, and it finally got restored, but I feel like it's still not doing well. So we'll try and make the best of it here. Uh, I'm back. If I caught you right, uh, your most – your most valuable was Tony Perkins. Your most improved was uh, Desante Bowen. You want to see what's was coming out of him. And the intriguing was the Sanford brothers, both Peyton, Kenny, step up price uh, freshman season might play a little bit of a role. Um, yeah. I, I kind of like that Utah comparison that you made with Peyton Sanford because he might play the four for this team at times. And um, like you said, Perkins has, um, has the two at this point in time. Dix is taking the one at this point in time, but I think we could see a lot of people make a lot of fuss about who starts basketball games. I'm more interested in who's closing the game. Who's going to be the closing five for this Iowa team when the game's on the line. I think Perkins might have the ball in his hands in the late game scenarios. And that's going to be a good move where Perkins will essentially play off ball a lot to kind of take that load off of him early on in games, but late in games, um, I think it can be kind of a shared responsibility until late in the games, the last five minutes, like we saw in the Illinois game last year where they were just running Tony Perkins at the one there. He was just pick and rolling. He was just getting to the mid range or going to the basket. And he scored like 35 points against Illinois and shot a lot of free throws doing it. I think that's kind of what we'll see late in games from this Iowa team. So it's more important about who's closing the game rather than who's opening it up. Uh, In my opinion, I think Fran feels the same way and uh, hopefully Tony Perkins is on board with that. Um, One other just intriguing thing, and I I didn't really have a category for it, but like Connor McCaffrey has gone and his numbers won't jump out at you, but what he did is kind of a leader kind of that mentally tough kind of guy, the unquestioned leader of the team. I'm curious as to who that is going to be because someone has to step up and fulfill that role, right? Like Connor did so many different things that you won't see on the stat sheet that added up to winning. And I'm curious if that's going to be, I think the most likely candidates are Peyton Sanford or Tony Perkins, because those are kind of going to be the two guys for this team. I'm curious as to who's going to be that one that everybody looks to. And we'll, we'll learn about that probably early in the season. Um, Let's flip on over to the women. How how about, how about the incumbent four year starter, Andrew? Yeah. The incumbent four year starter, Patrick, Patrick McCaffrey. Yeah. That might be a possibility as well. I can't, I can't believe it's we didn't. Even say, I can't. I can't believe we didn't even say his name. Yeah, I know. We're the 13 minutes deep in the podcast, and we haven't talked about Patrick. Like, um, is he still on the roster? It sounds like in like... the secret. <laughs> yeah, he is. He started in the secret scrimmage, and if my, uh, based off what I learned on Hawkeye Insider from that secret scrimmage, three guys scored 20 plus. Ben Cricky the transfer from Valbo, Valpo, Peyton Sanford, and Patrick McCaffrey. Those three guys scored 20-plus against Wichita State. Iowa won by 15 to 20 points in their secret scrimmage. So just one game of evidence, but those were the three leading scorers. Um, maybe Patrick does take a leap. Maybe we are all underestimating him. Um, but I think I for Iowa to be the best version of themselves – it's going to have to be probably Perkins in my mind as the guy all the way around. Um, you, you, you know, because I, I found it interesting, Andrew, because you, you let off with Connor McCaffrey's like it factor and the intangible things that he did as a leader and not stuffing the stat sheet. Right. Um, you know, maybe, maybe Patrick doesn't need to either. Yeah, Maybe. 
maybe. I, I hope that's certainly the case. I mean, they, they're, they're anyways, certainly, let's. They're, uh, they're certainly two different emotional players, right? Like P Patrick. I mean, Patrick's not going to get in anybody's face and, and start a fight at Illinois. You know, like that's not who Patrick is. So, um, yeah, right. It might be Tony. It might be Tony. Right, right. Tony certainly would do that kind of a thing. Um, so, you know, I started off the men's. I'll let you have first crack at the women's. Same three categories. Most valuable, most improved, most intriguing. I mean, do I even have to say who's most valuable? Because we are. Yeah, in it's obvious, but might as well just state it for the record. So for the record, it's it's 22. Uh, I cannot. Yeah, so wait. We're, we're in agreement. Caitlin Clark. Yes, Caitlin Clark. Uh, I okay. cannot wait until they come out here. Those tickets just went on sale through Maryland uh, athletics. And it turns out it's a Saturday night game against the top 15 opponent uh, currently as it sits Maryland's perennial top 10. So that could be another top 10 showdown. And I, I need to see some revenge factor out here because after they got blown out out here last year at college park, uh, I need to, to fly my black and gold, uh, you know, pride proud out here. This, this next go around. Um, uh, hope, hopefully the most improved is Hannah Stolke, who's already the, the sixth woman of the year last year. She She's going to need to come up with, with some big points to, to replace make, uh, Monica Sinano's point production and like specifically, um, you know, Kate Martin returns, um, Gabby Marshall returns. They just need to be the players that they've already been, you know, in their, at their time, you know, in their time in Iowa city, as long as, as long as those two, have are, are the same player as they've been in Iowa city. And I mean, the biggest, again, the biggest uh, jump up is going to be Hannah Stolke and, and needs to be, if they want to make another final four run. Um, honestly, I don't know much about the freshman class, Andrew. I, I, I don't know who's coming in. Uh, I don't know who starts, uh, I guess would be the four spot, right? Because Hannah Stolke would be the five. Um so I don't know much about the women's roster other than the ones that are returning, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, sorry, my technical issues are popping up again. But uh, yeah, um, most valuable, totally agree with you. Most improved, I think I agree with you as well. Um, Hannah Stilke will play the four spot. Um, Addison O'Grady is going to oh, take over right. that five that's spot right. Sonano role. Um, so Addison O'Grady will step up there. Uh, but I think it'll be kind of a share of responsibility between her and Stolke. Um, your most intriguing, I didn't catch it, so I apologize if this is a little bit of a repeat. Um, but I'm not going to go with a freshman because I don't think there's any true freshman um, that will make an impact for Iowa women this season. I'm looking at one person, and it's going to be Molly Davis. Um, she showed a lot in the scrimmage. She had double-digit points in the scrimmage and showed the capability to hit the three. It's her second year as a transfer from Central Michigan. She played backup point um, and played in relief of Caitlin Clark. Uh, she can play next to Clark as well. Um, but – it would be a huge lift for Iowa if if and when Caitlin Clark goes off the floor, if there's not that big of a drop-off because Molly Davis can handle things for short two, three-minute stretches of each half where Caitlin Clark doesn't have to play 40 minutes every game for us to feel good about our chances in the regular season. We can save that kind of an effort from Caitlin Clark for those postseason games that mean a little bit more the the Big Ten tournament, the NCAA tournament, or the non-conference or the big conference games like against Virginia Tech, who's coming off a of Final Four, or Indiana, or Maryland, or Ohio State, who are going to be the contenders, or Illinois even. Illinois women are even pretty good. So if we can uh, have Molly Davis kind of take care of business a little bit more, than she did last year, that's going to be a huge lift for Caitlin Clark for the rest of the season. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And then one other name I'll mention, a couple other names I'll mention, Kylie Fierbach coming off an injury. She can 
uh, space the floor and shoot the three, and so can Taylor McCabe. That's a name that we're going to learn about a lot in the post Caitlin Clark era. She scored, uh, I believe, 2,000 points in her high school career in Nebraska and was a really good three-point shooter. Uh, so this team has three-point shooting in the starting lineup and three-point shooting in the backcourt. There's guard depth on this team. There's a lot of guard depth on this team that I don't think people realize that they're probably going to realize as the season goes on. So that's uh, that's where we're at here on uh, um, Hawks Eye View. It's about halfway time. Good time to hear from both of our sponsors. We're just going to combo them up and hear from Revelton and Kyle Lehman at Wintrust Mortgage. Thank you to both of them. At Revelton. At Revelton Distilling Company, everyone has become a part of the Revelton family. From the Taylors and their daughter who helped perfect their award-winning gins, to the team who installed Lucy, our 33-foot tall custom-made still, right down to the local farms that provide our coveted corn, and even the cows on those farms who consume our mash byproduct. Want to see the farm to flask come to life? Now you can tour Lucy and find out where we take Iowa's harvest and transform it into our finest spirits. Choose between a 45-minute tour or find out even more by scheduling a VIP behind-the-scenes tour to get the taste of the full Revelton experience. You can visit them at 1400 West Clay Street in Osceola, Iowa, or find all of Revelton's award-winning spirits at any local grocery or spirits retailer. Are you in the market for a new house and unsure of the mortgage process? Want to know that you have someone looking out for you? Kyle Lehman from Wintrust Mortgage is a down-to-earth, knowledgeable lender who can be there for you in your corner. He can work with you in any of the 50 states and is just what you need to expand your home search. Kyle will work with you through the entire process with little to no work from you. Take the worry of the mortgage process out of the equation so that you can focus on looking for your dream home. Contact Kyle at www.wintrust.com forward slash Kyle dash Lehman or call him at 515-473-0546. All right, welcome back. And Drew, I want to go game by, not game by game necessarily because there's a few non-conference games for both where I just went ahead and created a nice little spreadsheet for us to track our game by game predictions. Cause there's a few more games in basketball than there are in football. So it's a little tougher to keep track of. I marked some non-conference wins for both the men's and women's team. Uh, So if you tell me if you feel like the men are losing to North Dakota or Alabama state, you let me know, but I got that marked as a win for you. Uh, And I don't think the women are losing to Purdue, Fort Wayne or Cleveland state or Bowling Green or or anything like that in the non-conference slate. So when it comes to non-conference games, I kind of left the toss-up games, if you will, for us to predict. Uh, there's a lot of good ones on both the women's and the men's side. Uh, let's start with the men's side, kind of like we did before, and talk about the big one. A It's a November game against a tough opponent in Omaha. I was going to travel to... Number seven, Creighton. Um, Creighton doesn't bring back quite everybody from last year's team that almost made the Final Four. They were one bad call away from the Final Four and lost in the Elite Eight. Uh, Nemhard, their point guard, transferred out. Um, but they brought in Steven Ashworth from BYU. Uh, their big man, Kalk Brenner, is back. He's a seven-footer. He's an All-American. Some say first team. Some say second team. Same thing with Trey Alexander, their guard, more of a wing guard, combo guard. Um, Then they have to replace Arthur Kaluma as well. They have Baylor Shireman back. He played at um, he played at uh, South Dakota State for a couple of years before transferring in last year. Six, seven wing player who shoots 30 footers a lot of the time, uh, but can take it to the rim and can really fill up the stat sheet as well. So I, I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb here. I'm going to take this as a loss, but it's going to be a lot closer than what everybody thinks. I think there's 
some depth issues at Creighton uh, where Iowa might be able to have a little bit of an advantage there. And yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the big man rotation looks like for Iowa early on because we've got Cricky, Freeman, Evan Bronze, Laji Dembele. We have actual big man depth this year, which is good. Um, but they'll be getting a stiff test right there in uh, the third game of the season on the road in Omaha. So I believe if I saw your hand signal, we both have this as a as a loss. Yeah, I, I will say this about Creighton, Andrew. Usually when they have expectations, that they end up being a bubble team, right? And then when they end up being a bubble team, that's when they go on a on an Elite Eight run. So, like, it, it, I don't know. It's one of those things. They're like Iowa of the Big East. They're still in the Big East, right? Yes, they are. So, yeah, I mean, when there's expectations put on them, they kind of underperform. And then, you know, when they're a bubble team, they go on that run. So if, if we're expecting this team to still be a top 10 team when we play them, um, I'm with you. I think it's going to be closer than it probably should be. But I think it is an L. Yeah, they will be a top 10 team when we play them because it's the third game of the season for both teams. Um, and they hey, you know, you, you and o, UNO might come up and beat them. Yeah, probably not. Um, I'm just going to go out on a limb. And then um, the next big non-conference game for the men's team, they play in the San Diego Invitational. So they start out by playing Oklahoma, one of the worst teams in the Big 12 who lost a lot of key pieces from last year. Um, I think this is just a down rebuilding year for Porter, Porter Moser and the crew there at OU. I'm going to mark this as a win. Uh, I don't see any reason to disagree with you, Andrew. I, I will say win as well. Okay. Um, then that means that Seton Hall and USC are going to play each other on that other side of the bracket. Uh, USC going to be a show this year in basketball because they have one Bronny James, the son of some guy named LeBron James. They also have the son of um, Dennis Rodman, DJ Rodman on their team. Uh, another five-star prospect in Isaiah, Isaiah Collier. Boogie Ellis is back. This is a team that's getting a lot of preseason hype, and they're actually going to be um, – they're number 11 right now, and I don't see any uh, reason why they won't be um, that when Iowa plays them. However, and we've kind of seen this before with younger teams that have a lot of talent, they don't really hit their stride in November. They more find themselves in the early part of the season and hit their stride in January, February, March. We saw this every year when Calipari was bringing in all those five-star freshmen and there was maybe some early bumps in the road, but then by late, season they were ready primed final four national championship run uh, i think this is going to be a bump in the road for the usc trojans I, I have iowa winning this game against the number 11 usc trojans and taking them down in the san diego invitational uh, in a game that is going to shock a lot of people and be a good resume builder for the iowa hawkeyes uh, you know, they don't have the Moberly, uh, Moberly brothers anymore, right? They had the twin brothers. Um, yeah, they had Mobley. Yep. Mobley, that's it, not Moberly. Mobley. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to go the other way, Andrew, just for the sake of going the other way. Okay. Um, I mean, expectations are high. Uh, do we even know if Bronny James is actually going to play this year after his cardiac event? You know what I mean? I so, like, I don't know if he's even cleared yet. Maybe he is. I have no idea. But um, and how good is he actually going to be? Because I think thinking of him as this is LeBron James coming in is is not it, right? LeBron James is the second best player in basketball ever, and we all know who number one is. Okay, so it's going to leave that there. Yeah, yeah. Um... So I mean, the bar is so high. We can't just expect this kid to be LeBron James coming into USC. No, and that's not my expectation for him at all. I think he's going to be a decent, a fine player. Um, but USC's got a lot of talent coming back. 
a lot of talent getting added as well via the freshman class. So I, uh, I love the talent of this USC team long term, just not in the short term here in November. And so that's why I'm penciling it in. So you went the other way. We counted as a loss. That's fine. Um, the next big game, it's kind of weird because the Big Ten plays some conference games in December and not a lot of other conferences do that. Uh, road game at Purdue. Mackey Arena has been a house of horrors for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Purdue is one of the best. Dan Zach Eady's back. Braden Smith, Foster Lawyer are back. Mason Gillis is back. Um, Caleb First, Trey Kaufman Renz. Uh, basically, everybody from last year's team that got bounced in the first round to 16 seed is back, but that team was really pretty good throughout the regular season. I'm going to go ahead and mark this as a loss for the Iowa Hawkeyes here at Mackey in December. I'm going to go the other way, Andrew. This is this is the game that will surprise somebody in December. Early conference game. You know, they're not they're, they're not fully clicking yet at Purdue, you know. I think they're going to struggle shooting early. Um, you know, Zach Eady is back. He's going to get his. He'll probably win player of the year again. And that's fine. Because the last time I checked, three is greater than two. So yeah. that's literally my only thing, right? Graham and Caffrey's teams, when they win, they just outscore everybody. They don't fucking play defense. It's going to be like 93-88 in overtime, something like that. Oh, yeah. You brought up a great point about the Creighton game, and I wanted to say this about the Creighton game. Um, both of those teams love to play offense. Creighton has a, definitely a better defense than Iowa, but they love to push the pace and push the ball as well. Uh, that game might end up in the 90s. That game in Omaha, yeah. that game might end up in the 90s. It's also a 9 p.m. tip-off central Ooh. time. Ooh. So it's going to be a late night for you. Um, probably no post-game reaction podcast on that one for you since it's during the middle of the week as well. Uh, but we'll, we might have to talk about it if, you know, I was able to pull out a win. We might have to get on and do something the next day and talk about it because it's a, a big one. But, uh, yeah, let's keep moving on here. Uh, the next the next game on the schedule, actually, um, because wedged in between that tournament was home game with North Florida that I marked as a win. Iowa travels to Hilton Coliseum for the Cyhawk game. Um, ISU has a lot of incoming talent. Obviously, Omaha Baloo. Others, they brought in some transfers as well. Curtis Jones, uh, Sean Gilbert, Jackson Pavaleski. Uh, a lot of talent left the program as well. Taman Lipsy is back. Trey King. A lot of talent. Going to be a good squad here. Um, but I'm going to go with some similar logic as to what I went with with USC. Uh, this is going to be Iowa State's first real test of the season. I looked at their non-conference schedule, and it's smart in what Otzelberger did with a young team. Scheduled a bunch of cupcakes. Um, the best team on their schedule that they might play is in the Events Invitational, the tournament that they're in. Probably either Texas A&M or Florida Atlantic, who brought back everybody from a Final Four run last year. Texas A&M is going to be a good team as well in basketball this year, too. Dark horse for a lot of people. Um, but other than that, it's a lot of teams that are going to finish bottom half of low Division One conferences for the just just feeders, just cupcakes, right? Um, this is going to be the, one of Iowa State's first true tests, and I think they're not going to pass it. I'm going to take the Hawks and Hilton uh, winning that one in a somewhat convincing manner. So give me the Hawks and the Cyhawk series. I wasn't going to go that far, Andrew, in convincing matter, but I also think that they win in Hilton. Uh, I think if, if we know anything about the Cyhawk matchup, not always the most talented team wins this game. And my opinion that I find that the Iowa State Cyclones are more talented than the Iowa Hawkeyes, 1 through 15. Uh but yeah, like there's there's more there's more returning for the Hawkeyes in my opinion uh, as far as leadership and experience in the Cyhawk series. 
Um, I, I, I think, I think they knock off TJ Otzelberger and company and Hilton as well. Yeah. All right. Um, next brings up a home game with Michigan. Um, man, I don't know what to expect a lot from Michigan this year. I, I will say I haven't done all of my Michigan research. I know that Jet Howard went to the NBA. I know that Kobe Bufkin went to the NBA. Hunter Dickinson left for Kansas. Um, you're bringing back like Terrace Reed, who is the backup for Dickinson, and Terrence Williams, who's been there for four years but hasn't shown uh, much as a scorer, mostly a defender, a uh, decent four man. And I don't really know who Michigan's got coming into the program this year. Um, suppose I could look it up, but I'm going to go ahead and mark this as a win. It's in Iowa city. Um, yeah. I, I just feel like this is going to be a win for the Hawks. I think it's the beginning of the end of Juwan Howard actually in Michigan. Yeah. I could totally see that. I, I think could, this, I, I could see Michigan being here. like a, a 14, 15 win team. Uh, you know, not even make the NIT, the CBI, maybe. I don't know if they even accept that. But uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not too worried about Michigan this year, especially in Carver Hawkeye. Um, I'll take. I'll take the Hawks as well. Okay, nice. Um, and then there's three home games against Florida A&M, UMBC, Northern Illinois. You taking any of those teams against Iowa? No. Okay. Uh, then the next conference game we're into conference season now it's all conference games from here on out at wisconsin um, loss loss i'm going that way as well uh wisconsin is a team that has a lot of people back as well um very solid team tough place to play so. yeah they suck so bad at the Kohl center andrew i don't remember the last time we'd done it um Actually, did we win at the Cole Center last year? Man, I, I don't remember. At, I need to look at some results, but let me look. Let me look that up while you uh, let's let's continue running down the conference slate here. Yeah, because we got the women's we got the women's team to get to. Uh, next two games are Rutgers and Nebraska. Rutgers has been good, um, but they lost a lot from last year's team. I uh, I don't think this is a good Rutgers team. I'm gonna park. Mark, this is a win for both Rutgers and Nebraska. I think uh, Nebraska will be improved, but they have a lot of a lot of questions as well. So I'm going to go back to back wins there for the Hawks. And Rutgers and Nebraska. Uh, Rutgers mucked it up the last time in like one of the worst basketball games I've ever seen in my life. Right? Was that last year? That like yeah. 40, 44, like bullshit. Like what? What I do know is they don't have Ron Harper anymore, right? Like that's that's finally gone. He's finally gone. He 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 left Rutgers with his PhD, or is he still playing? Yeah, Ron Harper's gone. God he was bless. actually he was actually gone last year. Oh jeez, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Time um, flies, man. Time flies. Yeah, the team that they had last year, ah uh, man, I can't remember when that forty six forty four game was. Because Iowa, it was not last year. Iowa swept Rutgers last year. Uh, what they lost was Caleb McConnell and Paul Mulcahy, the guy with the headband. No, oh, that, uh, that that douche. And then uh, Aaron Kraft 2.0. Basically, basically. And then also, um, oh gosh, Bo Spencer was kind of a shooter for them as well. That's right. Um, so. Yeah. Um, Cam Spencer. Cam Spencer, not Bo Spencer. So they lost three starters. Um, they're hoping a couple of guys that were off the bench can make a, a step forward. Peichel's a good coach. I, I just don't see them winning in Iowa City. Quick follow-up. We got swept by Wisconsin last year. Yeah, that's what I thought. And that same team is back. So yeah. I feel um, even better about my loss prediction then. Yeah, I feel pretty good about a loss there. Um, so Rutgers and Nebraska, what say you? I'm going to say a split. Uh, let's go. 
Is it at Rutgers? Nope. Both these are at home. Oh, okay. All right. I'll take that back. Both dubs at Carver Hawkeye. We'll okay. see. We'll, we'll see what happens on the return trip. Okay. Um, Minnesota might be the worst team in the Big Ten. It's at Minnesota. Weird place to play. That uh, weird, like, elevated court where you actually, like, sit at eye level when you're, like, in the in the chairs. <laughs> yeah. Um, they were a really bad team last year, and they lost their best player. He transferred to Ohio State. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take – I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, Iowa to win this game at Minnesota. Weird shit. Weird shit happens at the bar. You know the bar and Andrew, but I'm not gonna say it this this year. No, I'm with you. Okay. W. Return game, home game, big one against Purdue. You predicted a win on the road. I predicted a loss on the road. I think this is a classic spot where Iowa upsets someone at home that they're not supposed to. If you remember the first big win in the McCaffrey era, if you remember the big wins at home against Michigan State, um, Ohio State, things like that, I think this is going to be a big win for Iowa and Carver against Purdue. I think it's a Saturday game as well, so should have a big crowd and be rocking. So what, what say you? Uh, my, I can't put my Homer hat on too big and say that we're going to sweep Purdue. Okay. So you're going to have a loss at home. Yeah, I think they win at Mackey and a loss at home. Figure that one out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it makes sense for considering how up and down this team might be. Well, we're getting closer to a Fran Fade that time of year. Well, uh, I wish you hadn't have said that because that's <laughs> not exactly a true <laughs> – the most true narrative over the past five years, necessarily. Actually, France have been pretty good in February and March. You can talk about the NCAA tournament struggles, but the record in February and March has kind of been pretty decent, to be honest. So, nope. All right. um, stats can back me up on that, but we won't go too deep. Home game against Maryland. I think Maryland's going to be a really good team. Um, However, I'm not going to pick Maryland in Carver. I think I was going to win this game. Uh, yeah, uh, this is one of the home and homes as well on the schedule. I know that the Hawkeye men come out here as well this year, so I'm, I'm pumped about that as well. Um, yeah, I think protecting home court, I'm with you on that, Andrew. The last time I saw the Iowa men play Maryland men out here, uh, Bohannon dropped like nine three-pointers, set a team record. Like, we scored 120 points <laughs> at the Xfinity Center out here. You remember that game? Yeah, I remember that game. That was a <laughs> great game, yeah. I think he made eight threes or something in that game, something crazy like that. That was wild. Yeah, absolutely wild. Um, yeah, but uh, it, it should be a good competitive game nonetheless. I think, I think, those, so. are, I think so, those, too. Are, those are two evenly matched teams. Uh, next two games are both road games. At Michigan, at Indiana, both tough places to play. Um, Michigan a little bit down like we talked about. Indiana, kind of a mixed bag. They're going to roll like three big men out in their lineup. Tough place to play also, though. Um, we did kind of destroy them there last that last year. That was a Tony Perkins triple-double game, I believe, or near triple-double game. Yeah. Um, I just have sort of a gut feeling about both of these that Iowa is going to drop both of those. Mm. This is a tough, just a tough couple of road games against not the best teams on Iowa's schedule, but teams that are just going to be maybe annoying or inconsistent and they're just going to have good nights. You can, Iowa. you can sell me on Indiana at assembly okay. hall. You can sell me on that. Um, Man, that Michigan game is 50-50. Yeah. Uh, for the sake of being different, I'll say a, a win. We sweep Michigan this year. Okay. And at Indiana? That's an L. Okay. And then we play a what I think is going to be probably a lot better Ohio State team than people realize at home. 
I'm going to take a win here over Ohio State at home. Ohio State is so weird to, like, predict. Year in, year out, always like a bubble team, like a six, seven, eight seed in the tournament. They end up peaking towards the end of the year. Or I believe last year they ended up shitting the bed. <laughs> um mm-hmm. towards the end of the year, like losing like six of seven or something weird like that. Um I'll take the Hawkeyes. Okay. All right. Uh, at Penn State, they lost their coach to Micah Shrewsbury, went to Notre Dame. They're in rebuilding mode. I'm going to take a win here at Penn State and then Minnesota at home. I think these are probably the two worst teams in uh, Big Ten men's basketball here. I think Iowa's going to win both of those games. I don't remember the last time Iowa played well at the Bryce Jordan Center. At Penn State. It's been a minute. Um, yeah, but also, like, I think something about just uh, the level of talent that Penn State has might have something to do with how well, Iowa plays. But, but, man, France teams over the years find a way to play down to their competition, too. You know? Had no business losing that game to Rutgers. You know, 40, yeah. whatever the hell it was. Awful. Awful. Awful loss. Yeah. He had Chris Murray. Like, what the fuck? Um, I'll still take a sweep, though. I'll, I'll follow. I'll follow suit. Okay. Okay. Uh, home game against Minnesota. Sweep. Yeah. Win. Nice. Um, at Maryland. Maryland is a tough team. A tournament team. I think this is going to be a loss for the Hawks at Maryland in a tough environment. I will be there to see them lose. I'm with you. That's a that's an L for the Hawks. Okay. I hope we're wrong, but yeah. I hope you're. I, like, I, I hope so. Yeah. Um, home against Wisconsin. I don't think Wisconsin sweeps us again for the second year in a row. We exact some measure measure of revenge um, for the earlier season loss. I'm marking that as a win. I agree. Um, at Michigan State, it's kind of a similar story to Mackey. House of Horrors for the Hawks. Michigan State has a legit Final Four potential, maybe even national championship potential. I'm not going to bet against Michigan State in that scenario, so I'm going to take Michigan State. Didn't we beat him by like 40 at the Breslin Center last year? Uh, not last year. That was maybe a few years ago when they were down on their luck a little bit. Um, Man, last just, year, just... last year at the Breslin Center, uh, we lost sixty-one to sixty-three, and Peyton Sanford had a wide open three that would have won the ball game, and he missed it. Okay, all right. So it was a very competitive game, um, but. Man, all those guards that gave Iowa fits last year against Michigan State. And then last year, the return game against Michigan State was the France stare down, epic comeback, Peyton Sanford shooting a lot of threes to force overtime. Iowa scoring like 12 points in 30 some seconds or whatever it was. Uh, And you see Caitlin Clark going nuts when Sanford hits three to tie the game. And then the next day was the Caitlin Clark shot against Indiana. Yeah, that's right. That's it was right. A, it was a hell of a weekend. And all those things happened while friend of the podcast, David Eicholt, was out of town. Of course. Yep. And that's when the narrative about good things happening when David Eicholt leaves the state of Iowa started. There it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. So, uh, yeah, at Michigan State, what say you? Mm. I think, like, literally over the last 10 years, Michigan State has been, like, the Virginia Tech of basketball as to, like, football, right? Like, always overrated. Always, like, well, you know how good Tom is always in March. Well, you know what? It's death, taxes, and Virginia Tech always in the top 25 when football season starts. So that's where I'm comparing the two there, if you can follow that one. Yeah, I'm um, following 
So uh, that being said, uh, they'll, they'll lose. It'll be a close game. They'll lose again. All right. Fair enough. Uh, tough game at Illinois. Line I have Coleman Hawkins, Terrence Shannon back. They've rebuilt their roster, I think. Maybe the lack of the true point guard hurts them. Uh, but, again, this is a tough place to play, and this has been a kind of a heated rivalry over the last five, six years between Iowa and Illinois basketball, which is great because this used to be the rivalry for Iowa basketball in the 80s and 90s. Um, so I I have this marked as a loss for Iowa, back-to-back road losses. Uh, absolutely agree, Andrew. In fact, I think this is the worst loss of the entire season. Ooh, okay. I, I think Illinois is the final four team in the Big Ten. Ooh. Okay. That's bold, but I like it. I like it. Uh Penn State at home after that one. I think that's a get right game for Iowa. Yep. Um Northwestern on the road. Tough, tricky. Northwestern's a tournament team. But I think Iowa wins this one. I I like that Northwestern coach too. I like him a lot. Chris Collins. Yeah, yeah I do like yeah, him too. Yeah, can we can we get him over in Iowa City when Fram pops smoke? Can we get him? Uh, no, I don't want him. I you got my I got my eye on a, a guy who was more local than that. Mm, former player? Uh no. I have my guy on a guy who's really local to the Des Moines area, Darren DeVries. Well, he played. Oh, did he? Did He's a he former play? player? Yeah, but he didn't. Um, he didn't. Then play he, for did, Iowa. Didn't, he, didn't he play at U and I actually? Yeah, he played at U and I. He was part of McDermott staff. Yeah. So, give me, give me Darren DeVries when Fran um, finally moves on or hangs it up. All right. So, Fair enough. At Northwestern. Uh when? And then the return game against Illinois. Uh, Iowa plays Illinois like twice in two weeks time. I think I was going to be jacked up for this one senior day. Um, I, I think I was pulling off a win in this scenario. Uh, I already alluded to the fact that I think Illinois is the final four team in the big 10. So I say Illinois sweeps the Hawks this year. I don't like it. I, I don't like it, but I feel that's true. All right, so give me one quick moment. I'm just going to go ahead and tally and see where that puts us in terms of wins and losses. 31 games. Uh, I have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, I have Iowa going twenty three and eight. There's no way in hell, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, I have Iowa going twenty three and eight. You're gonna have to scrub your list again. There's no way. Yeah. Yep. Um. I think it's really the USC win and a couple other win and the Iowa State win that are maybe putting me over the top. Um. And I believe you have. Let's see where we differed. So you have the loss against USC. Um, you have the loss against Purdue at home. Yeah. But I also had the win at Purdue, and you didn't. Yeah, and I didn't. So that's uh, a loss. Yeah, I think, that's a loss. I, 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 if, if I remember correctly, I think I put them right at a 20-win team like they always are. You've got 21 and 10. 21 and 10. That is exactly yeah. an Iowa bubble record year in and year out. Yep. Yep. So that's pretty good. I think I think that's good enough to be in. It's also good enough to be top half of the Big Ten, which Iowa has been a top half of the Big Ten 11 out of 13 years under Fran McCaffrey. Surprised I mean, you to know that? Uh, actually, yeah, I am. Uh, right. and, and a little bit more, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what big 10 basketball looks like next year. 
yeah, it'll be real interesting next year. Um, I mean, Oregon, USC have been to the Elite Eight and Final Fours, respectively. You UCLA. know, in the last couple of years, UCLA, UCLA yeah, it was, has, was in the national championship game and probably should have won with uh, what was it, Johnny Juzang? Yeah, and Tiger that, Campbell. That guy was a stud. Um, yeah, yeah, that was a great team. Uh, I know nothing about Washington basketball, but man, three of the four. Holy shit, that makes it a lot better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Big Ten basketball is going to be quite the deal next year on both sides because I don't know if you know anything about UCLA and Oregon women's basketball, but they're pretty darn good too. Oh, yeah. Oregon, well, that's where Sabrina uh, Sabrina Inescu. Inescu, yeah. Thank you. I can't pronounce her name. Yeah. Especially, especially uh, ladies and gentlemen, still haven't. I received my tooth, but it doesn't fit yet because I still have my suture in, Andrew. So when wow. they remove the suture, my tooth will now fit. Um. All right, let's flip <laughs> to the. <wi> <laughs> that was a, that was a happy picture for everyone. We're going extra long tonight. I don't know if you could tell. We're going with the mega preview here. Yep. We're gonna do the same thing that we did for the men's for the women's, and we're gonna go game by game with our predictions. I've penciled a few wins in here. Um, the big non-conference game for Iowa is they're going to play at Virginia Tech, a team that was on the cusp of the Final Four, I believe, didn't quite make it last year. Um, so Virginia Tech, Iowa, two top 10 teams, Iowa number three, Virginia Tech number eight. It's the second game of the season for Iowa. They play a warm-up game against Fairleigh Dickinson at home. And then they go play this game on a neutral floor. I don't remember exactly where the location of this game is. Um, uh, uh, hold on. Let me think of this. I remember it's some random place. Yeah, it's... Like North Carolina? Could be. Could be. Um... Let me look that up real quick. Either way, since you brought it up, I'm going to say that Virginia Tech actually knocks off the Hawkeyes in the second game of the year. Oh. I, I, I think I think Iowa all season long will have a hard time dealing with physical teams, and Virginia Tech's a physical physical team. You know, Iowa Hawkeyes, uh, even Molly with Molly Davis, Caitlin Clark. Those, those skinny little girls get bumped around, you know. They don't like that shit. Shooters don't like that stuff, man. And, you know, any team that out physicals Iowa, I think, has the edge uh, overall. Yeah, so it will be a, a test immediately for O'Grady and Stolke because Virginia Tech has Emma Kitley coming back. She's a 6'6 senior. She averaged 18 and 10 last year. Uh, so basically a Virginia Tech version of Monica Sonano. Um, and they have Georgia Moore, a uh, decent guard player as well. Um, I think this is going to be a great game. Um, I respect Virginia Tech and what they've done. I think this is going to be an early Caitlin Clark show. I'm going with an Iowa win here. Um in North Carolina, where they play Virginia Tech, so I know I, 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 I nailed that. I nailed that. North Carolina. Yeah, you nailed it, Charlotte, North Carolina, the Spectrum Center, where, where the, the Bobcats where, play, where the Hornets play. Yeah. Well, I guess it's Hornets. They they rebranded re back to the Hornets. That's right. Yep. And, yep. and they'll sell, and they'll sell that sucker out too, because Virginia Tech isn't too far away from Charlotte. True. True. Uh, next game is an in-state game at Northern Iowa, Cedar Falls. Uh, missed opportunity by Northern Iowa to put this game in the Unidome, I think, to sell more tickets and get more fans there. Um, and also, I don't know what you know about Missouri Valley women's basketball, but I believe you and I and Drake are projected to be 1-2 in the Missouri Valley Conference for women's basketball. So I left these on because these are not – they're in-state games, and they're not a, a cakewalk, I sure. don't think. Uh, there might be some sort of competition level. I know the Iowa's kind of handled business in the Caitlin Clark era against both you and I and Drake. I think they do 
but uh, I wanted to leave some room for you here in case you thought something different. Uh, so first off, they just announced that the McLeod Center sold out for that game today. I heard that on the radio today. Um, um, so yeah, they did miss an opportunity to put it in the uni dome. I don't know what basketball looks like in there, but, uh, I mean, it, it, pro- it probably would have worked and it probably would have sold out too. Um, that, that being said, uh, no, no problem. Uh, the talent level is not even close. You know, Iowa, Iowa runs away. Got it. Kansas state at home. Iowa dropped this game and it kind of shocked me last year. They played at K state and dropped this game. I, uh, I don't see a letdown here in front of the Carver crowd. Um, they're also going to play Drake at home right after this. Again, Drake, a good Missouri Valley team, but I don't see Iowa letting down in the spot. So I have home wins against Kansas state and Drake for the Iowa women. I uh, see Iowa I, undefeated so far. I, I see no reason to argue with you with those two. I feel like Drake has kind of regressed since uh, Jenny Bronchek left for Oklahoma yep. from Drake. I mean, those were the best days for Drake women's basketball was when Jenny was there. Um, so yeah, I, I see no concerns in, with those two matchups at all. Got it. Then there's, um, at Purdue Fort Wayne, then there's home against Bowling Green. Uh, I have all wins through those. I marked you down for wins unless you know something I don't, I'm going to keep it that way. Uh, next game is Cyhawk women's basketball. Iowa State had a lot of talent leave the program this offseason, either via graduation or transfer. All due respect to Bill Fennelly. Uh, I know this game's in Hilton. Can be a tricky place to play, but I I just don't see Iowa State having anything to keep up with Iowa in this matchup. I'm going to go ahead and take the Hawks in a a blowout here. Yeah, there's no Ashley Jones. There's no... uh... Uh, Stephanie Suarez, right? Yeah. Um, or Bridget Carlton. Or yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. There's there's nobody to to match up with Caitlin Clark here. Um, this is where she puts on a show in Ames. It is a sweep for the Hawkeyes in Hilton this year. Gotcha. Yep. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm with you. At Wisconsin, uh, I don't know a whole lot about Wisconsin. I know that Iowa did not struggle with Wisconsin last year. I don't think anything's really changed to change that. Um, give me a win against Wisconsin at Same. Wisconsin. Same. Uh, Cleveland State, that is the game that's at Wells Fargo Arena, the doubleheader with the men's team. Um, so that's cool. Home against Loyola Chicago. I got those both marked as wins. It's going to be a Cleveland steamer all the way across I-80. Let's move on. Oh, boy. Uh, Minnesota (laughs) um, and Michigan State at home. I don't really see any of those teams threatening the Hawks. I've got both of those as wins. What was the one before Michigan State? What did you say? Uh, Minnesota and Michigan State. Yeah, no. Let's move on. Okay. Um, Road games against Rutgers and Purdue. I don't think Rutgers and Purdue are any good enough to challenge Iowa either, even if it's on the road. I've got Iowa going undefeated at, up to this point in the season. Uh, that would probably put them number two in the country, which they already are, right? They're number three. Number three. Um, so pending something happening, they, yeah, they could move up to number two or number one. Who I'll, say th- happen. I'll, I'll say this. LSU will lose before Iowa does this year. Yeah, I haven't looked at the schedule, but I'd say that's probably a good bet. You know what? I just said that realizing that I have Iowa losing in the second game of the season. So hopefully LSU has one of those top 10 tip-off games that start the season. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, bud. <laughs> I'm going to have to go. I'm going to look that up while we continue. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Rutgers and Purdue, where you at? Uh, that's a sweep. Great. And then a big one against a top 10 team, a team that's pretty good. They did lose Grace Berger. It's a home game against Indiana. Uh, One of the things I really like about this game is that it's a 7 p.m. night game. Uh, So there's going to be a lot of fanfare surrounding this game. 
here at home. It's on the 13th of uh, January, which I'm looking that up right now just to say what day that is. Yeah, that's a 7 p.m. Saturday night game. Um, so in primetime on Fox, Iowa, Indiana women. Man, uh, this game is at home. This Indiana team is a tough team. Uh, I got the Hawks coming through here in this one. Uh, they play Indiana twice this year? They do. Okay, for, so for the sake of argument, I think this is going to be a split. So I'll say protecting home court. Uh, Mackenzie Holmes is also a preseason All-American, will be an All-American again this year. Uh, again, that physical uh, number five presence um, is, is going to be a matchup problem uh, throughout both contests. So I, I'm going to call a split. Got it. Uh, for this case, a, a win, right? In Iowa City? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, then a home game against Wisconsin. Again, not a very good team at home. I'm going win. Yep. Okay. Brings up a, a top 10 Ohio State on the road. This is a team that Iowa just absolutely pummeled. They lost Taylor Mikesell, who was probably their best player. I, I don't know what Ohio State's bringing back or adding to their team that could potentially threaten Iowa. So while this is a top 10 matchup, I think this is a favorable matchup for the Hawks. I'm taking a win here. Didn't Ohio State sweep Iowa in the regular season and then they beat them in the title game? No, Iowa sweeped them the whole way through. Did they? I think, okay. well, let me double check that. I can't remember what the results of last year were. I know that Iowa won the Big Ten Championship pretty easily. I can't remember what happened in the regular season. Uh, it's not pulling up for me. So, so, so there is a chance, by the way, that LSU loses their very first game. Okay. Number 20, Colorado in Las Vegas. Okay. So... They, right. might, they might lose before the Hawks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's very possible. I've got the uh, stats pulled up from last season to answer your question yeah. about Ohio State. Iowa went 31-7 and last year. That includes all the tournament run. Uh, they won at Ohio State. They beat, and they only played – because of the unbound scheduling, they only played, oh, they only played one in the regular one. season. They only played one in the regular season. And it was at Ohio State and Iowa won. Okay. And then they won again in the Big Ten tournament, 105 to 72. Yeah, it wasn't even close. <laughs> and uh, Ohio State's best player from that team is gone. Oh, shit. All right. So uh, I, up to this point, through 18 games, have Iowa perfect 18 and 0. <laughs> Let's go. Are you riding with me on a win at Ohio State? Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that for sure. Okay. Uh, Nebraska, kind of an up and coming team, but it's at home. Um, I've got I've got Iowa winning this one. It was a uh, 20. 14, 25th. No, it was 2016. I can't remember. 2014, 2015. I watched Nebraska and Iowa play for a Big Ten championship in Indianapolis where Nebraska knocked them off. Um, so, so I mean, I know Nebraska has some talent, but they don't have Caitlin Clark. So, I mean, I, I think the tides have turned in that matchup. Uh, give me, give me the Hawks. Okay. At Northwestern. Uh, I'm not very familiar with Northwestern women. I think Iowa blew them out twice last year. Yeah, they blew them out 93 to 64 at home. And I think they only played once because of the unbalanced scheduling. I I don't think Northwestern is that on the rise. I've got Iowa 20 and 0. I don't, but that's a win for me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're 19-1, I'm 20-0 through 20 games. Uh, big one at Maryland. I wanted to stop and pause here. Mm. Uh, I believe Diamond Miller, who was 
uh, Maryland's best player is not back, but everyone else is. So yep. I believe that, Devin Miller was the number three overall pick in the WNBA draft. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, mm. go ahead. Go ahead. It was at, at Maryland last year in February 2023. It was a really bad game for Iowa. They just could not shoot at all. They lost 68 to 96, and then obviously they got their revenge in the uh, Big Ten tournament, won 89-84, but it was a it was a tight ball game. Um, Brenda Freeze and Cruz seemed to be a bad matchup. Uh, I hate having to do this, but I think this is going to be my first loss prediction of the season for the Iowa women. I didn't expect that, Andrew. Uh, and, and for the reason that uh, you mentioned off the top of this is Diamond Miller no longer gives gives an advantage to the Hawkeyes um, to be able to spread the ball out, not just rely on K- K- uh, you know Caitlin Clark having to drop 40 to win this game uh, like she would have had to last year. Granted, I think she still dropped 30, and it was one of her worst shooting games of, of the entire season. So um, I think you might be right, though. I think I'm going to have to watch her lose again. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Maryland wins as well. I got that's oh. my second loss. All right. Well, that's my first 20 and 1, 19 and 2 for you. Penn State at home win. Move on. At Nebraska win. Move on. Nope. Uh Michigan at home win. Yep. Um at Indiana. Um this is a tough environment. I've got Iowa winning at home against Indiana. I'm like you with the split. You said split as well. So yep. we both have a loss there. That's two losses for me. Um, Illinois, I like it. They're a good up-and-coming team. But, again, I think Iowa's at home. They can solve Illinois. Win. I agree. Uh, Minnesota, bottom half team. Win for me. Yep. Ohio State at home. Well, if I picked Iowa on the road at Ohio State, and I feel like, yeah, I feel like this is a win for Iowa as well. Agree. So, um, it depends on what you think about Indiana's schedule. You have three losses in 28 games for Iowa. So, 25 and three, I believe. Give me just one second. I'm just double checking. 27, 28 games. Yeah. 28 games for Iowa. I have them at 26 and two. You have them at 25 and three. That feels right. We only disagree on the Virginia Tech game. Um, That feels like regular season Big Ten champion. And then I, we didn't do this with the men, but we can do this with both teams and give postseason predictions because I think they're obviously the Iowa women are going to be a one seed with that kind of a record probably because I think Iowa women are going to win the big 10 tournament again. So 26 and two in the regular season and I'm predicting big 10 tournament championship yet again. Where is it at? Um, great question. Great question. Uh, are we sure it's not back in Indianapolis? I don't remember because I know the men's is starting to rotate. Oh, it was in Minneapolis last year, though. Hey, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, they've thrown in Minneapolis. They've thrown in Chicago. Uh, I know the, I know the men have been at Madison Square Garden and the and uh, Capital One Arena here in D.C. before as well. Give me one second. Tell, tell me it's in D.C. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know, dude. I can't find it right off the top of my does, head. That doesn't matter. I'm going to say they lose in the championship game to give them their – would that be fourth loss for me? Yeah. So, I mean, you're looking at 27 and four, still probably going to be the one seed with having Caitlin Clark on your team. Yep. And I'm looking at – uh. Well, what did I say? 26 and 29 and 29 and 2. No, that's 
yeah. including the Big Ten tournament. So you're looking at yeah. twenty seven and four. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, twenty seven and four. Um, and then I, I don't know if we can really predict from there because the NCAA tournament. But I, this feels like another. As long as Caitlin Clark's healthy and they're one seed, you got to think Final Four. I mean, realistic, poss- realistic, yes. If you're a one seed, you're expected to make the Final Four, right? Like, yeah, that's not, yeah. and 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 it's not like the men's tournament. You know, usually, usually the majority of the one seeds make make the finals, right? Men, men's what I, has there been more than two one seeds in the tournament? left in the final four in the last five years. I don't think so. Yeah. It's yeah. In the women's it's usually, you know, all four one seeds go maybe a two upsets a one, you know, it's a lot of high seeds. Well, I mean, wasn't, wasn't the Iowa women a two seed last year? Iowa women were two seed. LSU was a three seed. LSU was a three seed. That's right. Because nobody respected LSU's schedule. I remember that. Correct. Like, didn't they get that with a three loss season? Yeah, three or four loss season. <laughs> yeah. so. Just no, had no respect from the jump. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hope I'm wrong about the losses in the regular season. I hope Iowa flips both my losses into wins and goes on a magical, perfect season. Uh, <laughs> that would be awesome. Here's the thing, Andrew. Uh, if they make the tournament, that's all I care about. Okay. Because we know what the Iowa women are capable of. We've seen it last year. Yeah. Make it make it to the dance. I don't care how you get there. I think it would be really cool, though, to be chasing perfection. Like 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 the old UConn teams used to do? Yeah. Where, they, where it was like a, a given, where they were going for a perfection and even completing perfection because they were just that freaking good. Yeah. That's so true. I, I want that for... Caitlin Clark and the Iowa women's program. If anybody deserves it, it's them. For sure. They've, wor- they've worked hard for it. So they deserve it. Um, any closing thoughts before we wrap it up? I know we went extra long tonight, but man, I get excited about basketball. I could talk about basketball all day. There's also a lot more games. Felt like we needed to do game by game like we did with football because these teams are deserving. So um, we'll be back next week. No, Saturday or Sunday podcast because there's no football game, no basketball to talk about. So we'll be back next week to preview uh, the Wrigley game. That's right. Iowa Northwestern and Wrigley Field. So that'll be a good event as well. Um, My one final thought is we talked about it with the Iowa Indiana women's game, um, but a lot of people didn't like streaming uh, platforms for all these games and stuff. But the one thing that streaming is going to do is Iowa women have a lot of games on Peacock. Um, you're going to be able to find Iowa women's basketball on TV a lot because they're on ESPN2, FS1, Big Ten, Fox, even in some primetime slots as well because of the hype surrounding that team. Uh, but for the games that are maybe less hyped for the Iowa women, they're going to be available on Peacock. Which is now, which is great because it brings a lot of visibility to women's basketball that wasn't there. Where maybe you'd have to like find the game on Big Ten Plus or something. I feel like Peacock's easier than that. Will the Iowa women be on any ESPN platform? I don't think so. Is there, ESPN is, two. Their oh, game against Virginia Tech is on ESPN two. Oh, because and, it's it's because of Virginia Tech then because we don't have Big Ten doesn't have a media deal with ESPN. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um trying to look it up here. The TV schedule. They've got ESPN two. Uh they've got Northern Iowa on ESPN plus at Iowa State on ESPN two. And that's it. But everything else is BTN, Fox, Peacock. Uh what I just meant though was that all these games are televised. It's like you don't have to go hunting True. to find any of these games. And I think that's one of the good things about streaming. 100% if agree. There was downsides, that's one of the upsides. <laughs> the downsides is the production quality delay yeah. delay like Peacock for sure delay is real bad. Yeah, but it used to be no production at all for a lot of these women's games. That's true. Except for the big ones. So 
some production is better than no production. I'll so. give you I'll give you that. Any any closing thoughts before we call it a night? I mean, I think we just previewed two tournament teams, Andrew, and if that happens, I'm gonna be a happy camper come March. Yeah, I will be as well. That is that is what I want to see. I want to see both men's and women's team in the tournament. I think one team is a given, one team maybe we'll have to fight for it a little bit more, but they might get they'll probably get there. Okay. Um yeah. Thank you as always, everybody, for listening. Uh, appreciate you sticking with us through the technical difficulties as well. Thanks as always to our sponsors, Revelton, Kyle Lehman. Appreciate you, Revelton, for giving out whiskey bottles the past two weeks as well. Um, so thank you all. Great night and go Hawks. See ya. <laughs>